Hello, welcome to Pathagonia. This is Jay. Today we are going to talk about a gain tumor. And I want to wish you all a happy 2024. Uh, I just did a previous video on soft tissue tumor, uh, interesting case conference for cytopathology. So make sure to check that out if you already haven't. And then let's, let's get to it. This is an 89 year old female with an enlarged left supraclavicular lymph node. And so they did a biopsy. So this is the touch uh, slash smear that they did. And here you can see a very cohesive 3D shaped cluster of cells. As we look closer, these cells are markedly enlarged as you can compare the kind of background inflammatory cells on the right with those very cohesive cells on the left. They have a high NC ratio. And then this is the diff quick. And you can appreciate the nuclear aniso or the anisonucleosis. Um, the inflammatory cells on the, like the bottom half of this picture are, you can fit like maybe even five or six of these cells in the biggest cell in that cohesive cluster. This is a pap stain. As you can see, it's, v it's very cohesive and it's so 3D in fact that it's a little bit orangephilic, not because it's squamous cell carcinoma, not because of that, but because it's just such a 3D structure. The stain didn't penetrate through. And here's just some more pictures. This is the cell block that we received. And this is a PAX-8 and a WT1. Um, and I'll talk more about staining, uh, but before we begin, okay, you heard enlarged left supraclavicular lymph node. What is this clinical finding? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's the Virchow's node. And Virchow's node is a finding where if you have enlarged lymph node in the left sup supraclavicular that is associated with uh, metastatic, uh, metastatic gastric carcinoma, ovarian carcinoma, among other different types of carcinomas. And it's really cool to understand how the anatomy relates to why you can have mets from those organs. Well, the um, Virchow's node is left supraclavicular and that receives lymphatic drainage from the lymphatic duct or AKA known as the thoracic duct, which receives drainage from the left head, the left chest and back, the left arm, the entire torso slash hips, the bilateral lower extremities. So any, if there's tumor, theoretically speaking, it can drain all the way and it'll, the final destination will be that thoracic duct. On the other hand, the right lymphatic duct drains the right arm, the right face, and the right chest and back. So cyto cytology, we saw 3D clusters with increased NC ratios, prominent nucleoli, anisonucleosis. So your differential, if you didn't see the stain, would be breast, GI, possibly mesothelioma, melanoma, thyroid, renal. So CK7 and CK20, so what stains to order? So CK720, PAX8. Uh, PAX8, if it's positive, you want to think thyroid, renal, ovary. And CK7 was positive and CK20 was negative. So entities can include lung, salivary gland, breast, um, ovary, or gyne tract as well. Uh, thyroid. And then P53, WT1, P16, and napsin amicar. So when is serous carcinoma... I guess we'll talk more about those stains later on, but when is serous carcinoma high grade by definition? Exactly. So when serous carcinoma occurs in the endometrium, that's when it's endometrial serous carcinoma, that's high grade by definition. And what other endometrial carcinoma is high grade by definition? Exactly, clear cell carcinoma. Now P53, let's talk about P53. Uh, aberrant staining pattern. So high grade serous carcinoma of the ovary will have aberrant P53 staining pattern. And it's over, if it's overexpressed, that's due to a missense mutation. It's null, it's a loss of function. Cytoplasm, it's loss of function, but it's near the nuclear localization domain. So I thought it was so fascinating how you can have 
based on the staining pattern, kind of deduce where the mutation is or what the mutation, what type of mutation it is. Okay, the different types of ovarian epithelial carcinomas include the big five, endometrioid, where ERPR will be the strongest positivity. You can have clear cell, where napsin and amicar will be positive. Mucinous, where CK7 and CK20 will both be negative. Uh, CEA will be positive. And molecularly, molecularly you'll have a KRAS mutation. Uh, transitional or Brenner tumors, his, uh, you can rely on histology. Uh, also, P63 and GATA3 will be positive. A serous, high-grade serous, you'll have P53 aberrant, and you'll have a WT1 N terminus nuclear positivity. And I'll let me get to why I specify the WT1 nuclear N terminus. I think WT1 is one of those genes like P53 where you can learn a lot just by knowing this gene and the IHC and the syndromes or pediatric diseases associated with it. So it is on chromosome 11. Pediatrically, this gene is associated with Wilms tumor and Dennis Drash. Now, it's important when you talk to your fellow residents or your med students, you talk about WT1, IHC, you want to mention N terminus or C terminus because they're different. If you do the C terminus, you want to look for specifically desmoplastic small round cell tumor. And it's molecularly defined by T translocation 1122, which is EWSR1 WT1. That's how I remember it. And it's C terminus because C goes right before D. And then N terminus nuclear positivity, um, you'll have Wilms tumor which will stain the blastemal and epithelial portions, not the stromal, and that will help you guide towards Wilms tumor as opposed to congenital mesoblastic nephroma. Uh, mesothelioma will, will, will be uh, N-terminus WT1 positive as opposed to your differential of non-small cell lung carcinoma. Metanephric adenoma, which you can see with uh, middle-aged males who have polycythemia vera, um, that will be WT1 N terminus positive as opposed to papillary renal cell carcinoma. And then chick duct 4 sarcoma will be N terminus nuclear WT1 positive as opposed to B core and Ewing's. And that's important to know because chick duct 4 sarcoma has a worse prognosis than B core and Ewing's. B core and Ewing's have similar prognosis as each other. Um, so here is the WT1 stain and it's nuclear positive in the cells of interest. And so that was Excuse me. So this entity was high-grade serous carcinoma. So just to recap, high-grade serous carcinoma will be 3D clusters with increased NC ratio, prominent nucleoli, and anisonucleosis, as we can see here. Uh, here is a cell block. Pax8 was positive, so it's showing us that it is a um, it could be a thyroid, renal, or ovary. What I did not show you was it's CK7 positive, CK20 negative, and also uh, WT1 was positive. So that guides you that this is a Mullerian origin, and it's more specifically, this is a Mullerian um, ovarian origin. And P53 was aberrant, so showing you that this was a high-grade serous carcinoma of the ovary. Um, your differentials, uh, we talked about Virchow's node, which is the left supraclavicular lymph node. Your differentials for um, ovarian epithelial carcinomas include endometrioid, clear cell, mucinous, transitional, and serous. Serous, you'll have P53 aberrant. Endometrioid, ERPR will be the strongest. Clear cell, napsin, and amicar will be positive. Mucinous, CK7, CK20 negative. And then we talked about the WT1. C-terminus nuclear, desmoplastic small round cell tumor. N-terminus nuclear, think Wilms tumor, mesothelioma, metanephric adenoma, and chick duct 4 sarcoma. And I didn't put it in the table, but it was this case, this high-grade serous carcinoma. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. Um, we really appreciate your support. And until next time, bye.